we trust that God has blessed you at the end of your day. And we want to thank you for coming out and celebrating 35 years with us here. 35 years of God's blessing. God's anointing. God's praise. 35 years. So we thank you. We don't take it for granted. We want to thank all the visitors who came out and, and want to join in and participate with us. I see um, our friends from True Life. I see our friends there. Come on, y'all wave out and say, yeah, hey, there you go. All right. And of course, we thank the um, Weekly Heights for coming out and joining. Yeah. You know, so yeah. That's just the wave in the back. You see, I'm here. There you go. Thank you, sister. I see you. God bless you. So we're going to move forward in our devotion, and we just want this to be a, um, a, a service of praise where we give our thanks to God. Can we do this just for um, a couple of hours? We could just lay aside every way, everything that we have hard on us to do. I know the screws may be hurting, the feet is hurting. So you're thinking about the bar, you're thinking about that person who's sitting next to you at work. Oh, I got to go deal with him or her. Um, I got to go cook. I got to deal with somebody at the house I may not want to deal with. We just going to lay those things aside and we're going to usher in the blessings of the Lord. Can we do that? Amen. Amen. I guarantee you, we will be blessed um, after that. So let's join in us, join with us as we open up with our um, devotional um, praise.
prayer like the Lord. Yes. We think about all those good eating things we do at holidays, but it pales in comparison to the spread that the Lord has gone on. There's healing, there's blessing, there's anointing, there's deliverance. Yeah. Come on, but we turn the table of spread. Hey, nothing we're doing, but it's the spirit of the God. Well, he's at the feast that's going on. Amen. 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 We're going to have our scripture reading. Digging and training, Brother Crenshaw. He's going to give us our scripture reading for this afternoon, followed by our prayer by Deacon Harris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I'm going to read a very beginning passage. I'm going to come out of Psalms 23. Which means, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Here we have the reading, the understanding of the Lord's holy word. Amen. 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 Okay, we're bowing in please. Our Father, who art in heaven, I will be thy name. Yes. Thy kingdom come, mm -hmm. that will be done. Yes, it will. In earth, as it is in heaven. Yes, it will. Yeah. Give us this day our daily oh, bread, yeah. and we forgive our debt, oh, and we forgive our debt. Lead us not into temptation, yeah. but deliver us from evil. Yeah. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Yes. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. I want to thank Brother Pinshaw for that reading the scripture. I want to thank you, Harris, for us every day. He was before that. Let's not say that was a, a young senior moment. Amen. Amen. And uh, we want to thank you for that prayer. We're going to um, close our devotion at this time. We do want to, um, again, echo those words at the beginning and thank you for coming out and sharing. And we're just asking, we're just asking for this time together that we can lay aside all those things that may be coming up against us. And right now, just have a fellowship of praising God. Amen. Amen. 35 Amen. years of doing anything or being anywhere is a blessing. God bless you. It's good seeing you. And we want to close our devotion. We're going to link up with prayer as we close our devotion and turn it to the pulpit and ask God's blessing. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you again for this privileged time. We thank you for this hour of prayer, Father, where a few have gathered together, Father, to call on your holy and righteous name. Father, we want to lift you up high with our voices, our hearts, and our spirit, our very soul. We just want to give you all honor. We thank you, Father, for 35 years of blessing this church here on this corner, being a beacon in this community, Father God. So we want to thank you for that. We thank you for our family and our friends who come out to share and to celebrate what you have done on this corner. Come on over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. And we all say it's going on. For going on in our life, Father. Now bless us. Bless all who have come out. Bless our friends. Bless our visiting church, Father God. That you continue to, to um, bless them as they go on also. And we just want to thank you for this day. We thank you for our pastor, um, Pastor Benson and his wife, Sister Benson, for being here, Father God, and laboring in the venue to service your people in this community. We thank you. Now bless us in this day. Let us lay aside every weight, Father God, and let us cast all of our cares upon you, for you said you cared for us. And we're going to give you honor, and we're going to give you praise, regardless of where we're at right now. We're going to sing praises unto your name. And we ask these blessings 
In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And we all said amen. Amen. And amen. 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 God bless you. We're now in the hands of the pulpit. I'd like to say good evening. Good evening. And thank God for this opportunity to be present in the worship service. What a tremendous blessing it is to be in a worship experience on the Lord's Day. It's a good thing. We want to thank you as you come through our 35th church anniversary. And it is the church anniversary, not the pastor and wife's anniversary. Somebody might be thinking, Sister Benson is here. Wave your hand, darling. Amen. Sister Benson is here. Amen. It's not the pastor and wife's anniversary. It's the church anniversary. Amen. So I might say that, folks. That's it. That's it. Right over there. We want to take this opportunity just to get our hearts right as we line up the word, will, and way of God. So we're going to look at Psalms number one, a familiar passage, and we're going to serve as our serve as our scripture for this evening. Reverend Joyce Burleson will give us our prayer. These are the words of Psalms number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sit as in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Read for you the entire number of one psalms. Reverend Josh Croson will lead us now to the throne of grace. Bow your head, times. Whether you're seated or seated or standing, we're in the presence of a holy, righteous God. And this is a privilege to be able to come to Him in prayer. Why such a great privilege? Because of Jesus Christ and the cost that he paid to give us access unto the throne of grace. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we come before you humbly, but we come before you with the boldness that the Savior has given unto us. He gave his life that we may have in him life everlasting. We thank you first, Father, for your love for us. Yes. Had you not loved us so much, you would not have sent your son. And we thank you, son of God, in obedience to the Father, you came. And you did not leave us alone, but you gave us a helper. We say thank you, Holy Spirit. Rule, reign right now in this place. Rain down and get us prepared for what God is going to do in this hour. We thank you, Lord, for 35 years in celebration of this church. But, oh God, there's many of us who have a great number of years, and some of the saints have gone on with great number of years. We could not come to a one of them, not even a second of our life, except you had breathed upon us and gave us breath of life and then gave us strength and determination to run on, to run on. So we thank you, God. It's a privilege to serve you. And our celebration today is first of all a celebration of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We will worship you in this place in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus. And the saints said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. amen. And give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Well, 
made it real easy on the pastor this day. I just have to hand off the baton and sit down. Very difficult task for a pastor. We want to, at this time, bring our worship leader, the introduction of our worship leader, and we're so grateful, Deacon Matthew White, will do that honor right now. Thank you, Deacon White. Let's give him a round of applause for the Lord is good and ever mercy. Keeping all of the God, who's the head of my life, Pastor Benson, Pastor Hall, Elder Lansing, Reverend Burleson, and our guest speaker, Reverend Williams. It is with great pleasure that I introduce your worship leader for this afternoon. First of all, He's a Christian. He's a child of God. Not only is he a child of God, but he's a student of the Bible. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a businessman. He's a teacher. And he's an instructor. Before I introduce him, I'm reading from Luke 17. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this tree, this tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thy plant, see and it shall obey. It is my pleasure to introduce your worship leader for this afternoon, like I said. Amen. And that's Deacon Donald Ray Lambert.
touching the lives of people of all races. In 1983, Bethany left Ella Austin Community Center and began meeting at Del Prince Plaza Shopping Mall, 1800 South W.W. White Road. It was not long after that move in September of the same year that Bethany located its present edifice and began renting it by faith. The church building was originally located at 4600 Highway 90 East on the access road. It was during this time period that Bethany experienced its first miracle. On December 27, 1983, the church building was donated free and clear to the congregation by its then owners, the Bethany Joint Venture, made up principally of Mr. Richard Wade and Mr. Jerry Haddis. As a stipulation to the gift, the church had to be moved. Through the help of the Lord and his speaking to Mother Claude L. Benson, successful negotiations were achieved with Mr. Quincy Lee and Mr. Ray Ellison for the purchase of our present location at 202 Noblewood Drive. On April 26, 1986, Bethany moved the building down the access road of Highway 90 to its present location. In May 1992, Bethany again experienced God's miracle when it was given the Hazel Miller Building at 229 St. John Street by Mr. Johnny and Mrs. Alberta Miller in memory of Mrs. Hazel Miller, who was a pioneer in home daycare services. Both the church and the daycare building each have over 6,000 square feet. So during our 35 year history, we have been blessed to reach hundreds of listeners in South Texas over radio stations, KAPE, KSLR, KSJL, and KCHL. We have also had several revivals and some beautiful sunrise services that were open to the city. The church continues to work with the community on issues that affect the lives of its members and welcomes you to join in the soul-winning <coughs> teaching and outreach ministries. Your participation and that of your family, children, grandchildren, and other relatives are an important and integral part of the focus of Bethany First Baptist Church. We thank you for listening to our history. We thank you all for coming out to be a part of this celebration. And we pray that God will bless the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your year.
thanks and praise to God, I can concur that he has done a great thing in my life and in the life of this church. Again, giving thanks and praise to God and giving uh, honor to uh, my father in the ministry, Reverend Dr. Ronald Benson, uh, to, uh, to Pastor L.A. Williams, the Levi Heights Baptist Church, to Reverend Ferguson, and the ministers here in, in, the, in the building. Uh, we say hello, we say hi, and we're glad to be here. Amen. Glad to be able to give this tribute. Amen. You all will excuse us because after this tribute, and I already, I already told my dad, uh, my dad in the ministry. By, by the way, I have to keep that straight because, you know, I'll, I'll get on the radio and I'll say my father in the ministry. I can't tell you how many people have called up and said, tell your daddy. <laughs> your dad is something. Man, my dad in the ministry. <laughs> We have a, at, at right down the street at uh, True Life Christian Fellowship, we have a, we have a wedding at 5 o'clock. Oh so we're going to tip out, but I would not have missed this for the world. Uh, to uh, to the, uh, Deacon, the smooth Deacon Ray Landry, I said, we need this with you right now. We see for Bethany. Somebody amen. 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 And I want to let you know that this 35 years has been a glorious, glorious time for this community and for this city. Amen, amen. One of the reasons, and one of the main reasons in this area, and because Bethany First Baptist Church is here, and has been here in no uncertain terms for 35 years. I'm proud to tell you that uh, uh, the 37 years ago, this month, September 8th, Reverend Dr. Benson married me in my ride. Amen. Right. Tied the knot, jumped the broom, and all that good stuff, amen. <laughs> but I just want to tell you a few things before we go, amen, in tribute to this great church, and I do say great church. Amen. The, the tone that Bethany First Baptist Church has set for the community has been one of excellence and has been one of stability and has been a tone that says the Bible is the undergirding and, and the foundation of everything that is said and done that is worthwhile in the kingdom of God. Amen. I say it's the word of God Amen. that makes anything, are oh, y'all hear me today? Amen. Bethany has stood for that for 35 years. Amen. And I can tell you even before that, amen, even before, amen, even at the time when, when I remember when, 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 uh, when Ron Benson, amen, and Lillian Benson first got married, they began to stand for the undergirding, the foundation of the Word of God, even Amen. then. Amen. Amen. One of the things that I, we took away from, and by the way, True Light Christian Fellowship and other churches have come out of Bethany. Amen. First Amen. Amen. Come straight out of Bethany First Baptist Church. You say, how can you say that? Well, it's easy because it's true. Amen. Okay, and because the 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 the. Uh, the I, not only just the ideas, but the standards that would that would undergird the Church of God, the Church of the Living God, is what something that we drew from Bethany First Baptist Church. Amen. I believe in our fourth anniversary, the, what, I borrowed some things, Pastor Benson, from you in our fourth church anniversary at True Light. One of the things that I remember, that we remember, Kathy and I did uh, years ago, is one of the things that Reverend Benson told us at this great church, and it was. Dare to be different. Amen. Deny all difficulties. Amen. And disregard dollars. He taught us that, and he taught us that early. Little did I know back at that time that that was the beginnings of what True Life Christian Fellowship was going to be. So at Bethany First Baptist Church, one of the things that he has taught this community is that we are to dare to be different in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not to be run of the mill, but certainly not to be uh, man pleasing, but God pleasing. Amen. Is, the, is the thing. Amen. And then to deny all difficulties. I'm, I'm certain that in this 35 years that there were opportunities uh, and nobody probably would have blamed you if you would have said, okay, that's it. I, that, that's, that's it. Here's my key to the church. Later. And that comes in, in, in the life of any church, in the life of any undertaker, especially in the body of Christ. 
But what Reverend Benson did and what this church did, what these folks did in this church is to deny the difficulties and keep pushing. Amen. Deny the things that were hard and keep moving. Not that they weren't there, but they weren't going to stop God's program. They weren't going to cease what was obviously a blessing in this church. And then they disregard disregarded dollar signs that you heard in the history, amen, that, that was, re that was uh, read. They disregarded dollar signs just getting this building from over there to over here. Amen. amen. Some people would have looked at that and said, you know, we could do that, but you know, I don't see any sense of spending all that money to be moving some building, so and so. And look, it's standing today. Amen. The, it's drawing people today. Amen. The love in the hearts of true like uh, of, of Bethany First Baptist Church is drawing people even to this day. Amen. Amen? And then I want to tell you lastly that it, that it's been an honor and a joy to watch the work of Bethany go on and on and on, on television, on radio. I've been a, a humble, humble a recipient of, of time on the radio when I sat in for my father in the ministry Amen. In, in moments of meditation. And I want to tell you right now, and, and if anybody wants to deny it, I, I'll say, well, amen, but I can tell you right now that there is not a, that there, there is not a radio program yeah. on KCHL that is more substantive yeah. than moments of meditation. Yeah. 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 saying that because I guest host, I'm saying because the foundation is set in there, which for, for with, with Bethany First Baptist Church. So in these 35 years, you see, they haven't been just resting on their laurels here, just doing nothing. It hasn't been just us four and no more. You know how some churches can be. As long as we just have us in here, that's all right. If somebody else comes in, they better not come in here messing up our program. Y'all know how some churches can be. Amen. No, Bethany has been inviting. They've been welcoming. They've been loving. And they have set a precedent and set, a, a set an example for the community. I am proud to say Amen. That True Light Christian Fellowship, along with other churches in this community, have come out of Bethany First Baptist Church. Amen. To Pastor Benson and Sister Benson and to all the wonderful loyal members of Bethany, I say congratulations. God bless you. We Amen. celebrate with you today. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Amen. 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 God bless you today. Amen. And now we go marry some folks. God bless you.
Archie, to all of the working clergy, who may be present on this evening, the very fine officers, members, of the worship leader, the Landry, amen, and to all of you, my fathers and children, we are blessed of the Lord to be able to be present one more time. And oh, what a time we've been having this evening in the Lord. Amen. Thank the Lord for uh, this choir behind me. Song is so passionate. Sister Fields, I, I thought the ushers were going to have to come get me because I love that song. I, I grew up on that song as a teenager in the church and it became such a part of my person, just when I when I heard you strike that first cut, I said, oh my Lord. And I said, uh oh, huh. And then when you ran back on a little bit, I said, help me, help me. <laughs> amen, amen. Let me tell you something. I like that kind of singing. I like that kind of song. I like that kind of service to God as you have rendered it here today. God bless you and thank you for that. Amen. Now, can you come sing for us next Sunday? <laughs> Amen. I know you got to go to your church. Amen. It certainly was a blessing. Amen. Certainly, we want to thank the Lord for Pastor Benson and, and his kind spirit and, and his willingness to invite us to come on such an auspicious occasion, such a great day in the life of this of this church, and knowing that there are surely so many uh, pastors and preachers that he has relationships with, and those who know how to rightly divide with the word of truth, who could be standing here on this evening. Uh, but to extend the invitation to me and to us to come, I want to know I am highly appreciative of, of him and, and the caliber of man that he is, and the caliber of pastor that leader that he is, and the caliber of friend that he is, amen, to us, and we just thank God today uh, for him and for you uh, to be able to be here this evening, amen. Now, quite possibly, you're like me, you done already in. I do know how to say eight, amen, you done already in. And, and people of color, once they done in, you know, you know what's next, amen. I'm looking at some of y'all at the sign on your face. Amen. The evidence is that. It's, amen. And then they say you'll know a tree by the fruit it bad. Won't be long for some of y'all gonna be snoring. If you ain't snoring, your head's gonna be bobbing in the wind. Amen. amen. You won't be saying amen to the truth either. Amen. I've been a Baptist preacher for a long time. I know how we do. Amen. And so it is. We just grateful God. Let me be sure. Amen. That uh, we like hike because see, sometimes I get fooled. My vision gets kind of blurry. So we like if y'all stand up, I can see you better. That'll help me on my count too. Amen. Stand up, I can see you better. Amen. Oh, look like we running short. Look like we running short. Oh yeah, I can see pretty good. Look like we're running show. Amen. Thank God for all you here. Now for those of these these singers who are behind me, I need y'all, amen, to uh, start practicing your calisthenics. Amen. Rise. Amen. We'll get a few marching music where you all will come down and our choir will come up. Amen. See you, Deacon Chapman, Deacon Rogers, amen.
Robert, you can sit right there so you can say amen real loud when I need some help here. Amen. 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 Amen.
Yo! Yeah. 
Six words in verse number 15. The A portion of that verse, Psalms 31, verse number 15. And the A portion of the verse, there are six words. And the Bible says, my times are in thy hand. So when the reading of the word of the Lord. Thank you, you can be seated in the sanctuary. I want to talk about this evening for these next few minutes, the blessing of being in the right hand. The blessing of being in the right hands. Thank you, ushers, and those who make up our greeters ministry. Your nurses are present. Amen. We acknowledge you likewise and receive. Not too long ago, I was watching the television, and there was a picture or a movie that came on that was named or titled Dr. Doolittle. Some of you who may be like me, you are avid TV watchers. Sometimes you get glued to that one-eyed monster. <clears throat> and um, you see some of this, you see some of that. Some of it is very entertaining. Dr. Doolittle was played by one of the famed actors, man of color. Y'all know him, don't you? What's his name? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. I knew there was somebody who watched TV other than just me. Eddie Murphy was a doctor who, in this movie, 
would treat animals. The strange thing about this movie that Eddie Murphy was in and the animals that he would treat with their injuries, with their ailments, with their problems, is that the animals could talk. And they would talk to Eddie Murphy, who was Dr. Doolittle. Everybody couldn't hear them talking, but he could. And of course, later on in the movie, we discovered that not only could he hear them, but we found out that his daughter had the gift of being able to hear them also. And I guess you're wondering, why in the world am I bringing Dr. Doolittle into this message? Simply because modern technology now allows us to be able to be entertained <laughs> Uh, in ways that we know does not represent reality. If you were to leave here today and go home and you got a cat and your cat start talking to you, one of two things gonna happen. Either the cat's got to go or you already gone. If you go home and you, 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 you goldfish, or you, your pit bull, your rock wild, amen. Your bulldog, your chihuahua, whatever it is you have. Start entertaining a conversation, one or two things gonna happen. Either they gonna go or you gonna go. Amen. Cause that is not common. But with television, you're able to see things, hear things, experience things that are out of the ordinary. It's not just true, Dr. Benson, in relationship to that picture and uh, Dr. Doolittle and Eddie Murphy, but as, as a person who, don't y'all laugh at me, but as a person who likes to watch cartoons. Amen. At times I like to watch cartoons. Amen. And in watching cartoons, I am amazed at what we are able to do through computer and technology. And how even with the aid of computers and modern technology, things that don't have any life in them can take on life as an animated character and start talking. In other words, in cartoons, this podium could have a face with a mouth and eyes and nose and ears and start talking with modern technology now and what they can do with computers. Uh, uh, any object in your home, it can be an iron, it can be a skillet, it can be a pot, it can be, you understand, I'm thinking about food now, I said pot. I'm thinking about crock pots and amen and all of that. Animated uh, characters can, can be made to talk. Sometimes I'm fascinated by what uh, uh, the world has learned how to do in helping things that would not ordinarily talk start talking. And I introduced that because I was just curious as we come on today, if it were possible to take that kind of animation and apply it to Bethany, First Baptist Church, wow. or to apply it to Bethany Baptist Church, what would this church say if it had an animated ability to talk? When it looked at you, what would it say? When you walked up, what would it say? When you came in, 
what would it say? I believe that if it were possible today to take those uh, um, skills and abilities and technology and somehow or another cause Bethany to become a man, a building that has now character. Wow. And as the character would begin to speak, would it say to you, I'm in good hands? All right, all right. Help me, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Would it look at you as a member? Would it look at you as a part of the body of Jesus Christ and say to you, out of this own mouth, uh -huh. when you arrive, I'm in good hands? I was thinking about a story that the Reverend Robert P. Forte told me some years ago, and it still lingers with me today. He said that was a old man who lived in a city, and the word was that he was the smartest man in town, well. that nobody was smarter than him, but there was a young buck, there was a young boy who'd been off of school, who knew of his reputation, and when he came back home, he decided, I'm going to see if he's really the smartest man in town anymore. Well. Because I'm back in town now, and I've been off to the best schools and got some great education. So I'm going to put him to the test and challenge his smartness. Right. And so what the young buck did, the young boy did was, uh, he picked up a bird from a pet store. Wow. Little bitty baby bird and brought him with him to meet the old man. And he said, old man, he said, I hear you got a reputation of being the smartest person in town. Well. So here's what I want to do. I want to find out just how smart you are. He said, I have a bird in my hand. Well. And I want you to tell me, is the bird dead or alive? And so the old man thought for just a moment, and he said, I'll tell you what. Whether the bird is dead or alive is in your hand. The power of life is in your hand. The power of his death is in your hand. Because if I say the bird is alive, you can squeeze him because he's so small and I can't see him and kill him. Are you with me here? And if I say he's dead, all you got to do is open your hand and let him fly away. So I declare to you today, whether he is alive or dead is really in your hand. Well, Reverend, can you help me to understand what in the world has that got to do with our church? The life of Bethany is in your hand. Are y'all with me here? When you really read this 31st Psalm that you read, maybe beginning at verse number 14, and then read verse 15 and 16, there about what you would discover is that the psalmist is saying, my life is in your hand. Wow. He's really talking about his life being in the hand of God, but he brings up the fact that not only is God's hands uh, a part of his life and journey, but the hands of men are also a part of his life and his journey. When you read it, you will come to discover, he says, God, I need you to take care of me because my times are in your hands. But while my times are in your hands, I have to deal with the hands of men while I'm on this journey. Are y'all with me here? And so when we deal with the life of the church, we must understand that the life of the church is somehow or another affected by not only the hands of men, but also the hands of God. And that the church cannot exist 
in this world without, if you will, some impact, some influence, some investments from the hand or some injuries from the hands of men while we are yet placing ourselves in the hands of God. Help me, Lord Jesus. Are you, as a church, in the right hand? Well, if you're in the right hands, it means that you have to be in the right hands of men because of their impact upon your welfare and well-being. But you also need to be in the hands of God. Let me see if I can do something here, Rick. Great, because I want, I want, I want person to understand the need for the right hands, the need for good hands, the need for great hands. Any football players in here? Present or former? Used to be, wanna be? Well, you know, starting from the center, who's over the ball. You need a person who's going to hike the ball that's got good hands. Because if his hands are not good hands, the quarterback is in trouble. Am I right about it? And then the quarterback needs to have good hands. Because if his hands are not good hands, he can't throw a good pass. You don't want no wobbly ball, you know, hanging out, floating out, twisting and turning. No, you want somebody who know how to throw a sparrow. Who know how to throw a good, strong shot. Who know how to aim it in the right direction, put it where it needs to be. But then the receiver needs to have what? Good hand. Because if you got a good quarterback and a good center, but you got a receiver that when the ball hit his fingers, he can't hold on to it, you're still in trouble. We need to be sure, not only in the world of sports, but in the world that is a spiritual world, there are some good hands. And the right hands are a part of the progression of the team. Anybody here been to the dentist lately? Who would want a dentist that's got a problem with the DTs? Oh, I'm sorry, some of y'all don't know what that means. A dentist who got a problem with the shakes. You don't want no dentist digging around in your mouth who don't have no steady hands. Matter of fact, I don't know a whole lot about being a medical doctor, but I sure wouldn't want one with a scalpel in his hand and he got a nervous problem. Or he's like Muhammad Ali, he's got that problem, you understand, where he shakes real bad uncontrollably. Not that he wants to, but he can't help himself. Are y'all with me here? Good hands are important. And so it is, that's not just true in the circular world and in the world that may relate to medicine and things that I help, but we also understand that being in the right hands is important in the life of a church. And we want to be sure that every member that constitutes the church is a member that has good hands. Because if we can say like the psalmist, or the church can say like the psalmist, my times are in your hand. Right. Easy for me to find Bethany members because most of y'all got on blue. Right. So when I look out, I can know exactly who I'm talking to. Because the majority of you have got on blue. Wow. But the church's times are in your hand. Hand. I know it's in God's hand, but it's also in your hand because God works through human instrumentality. Am I right about it here? I know it may not seem like you, but truth of the matter is the financial strength of the church is in your hand. Thank the Lord for Pastor Runston Hall and thank the Lord for his reminding us that we are to dare to be different and that we are to deny difficulty, but to disregard dollar signs all together is not what he was intending to tell you. Because you can't totally disregard dollar signs if you're gonna pay the tithe and give the offering. Amen. I'm not trying to undo what he did. I'm simply helping us to understand the, the, the dimension in which he was speaking to. 
that even as the church, we must understand that there are times we, we cannot make money our focus. Faith has to be our focus. And when faith is our focus, God has a way of providing the money. But where does the money come from? It has to come from the hands of those who are part of the membership of the body of Jesus Christ. And so if this church in good hands, that all depends on how stingy you are. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh. I'm going to have him back next year. <laughs> That's all right. I'm here today. <laughs> These lights are on. And they don't get paid because your church's name is in the Bible. You know, Bethany is in the Bible. Amen. The air condition is working. And the air, amen, and electricity that is needed to provide that is not here because the Reverend Dr. Ronald Benson is known across many circles. All right. Religiously, politically, amen. In the marketplace, he's known. But his name doesn't mean anything to CPS unless there's some zeros and numbers that go along with it on an instrument called a check. Are you with me here? I'm trying to say to you, your financial welfare and well-being is in your hands. If the church does well, it's because you do well. If the church doesn't do well, it's because you are not doing what needs to be done. If financial future is in your hand, if spiritual success, if spiritual growth, if spiritual strength is in your hand, church needs to be spiritually strong. And the church is not spiritually strong because it has buses and not spiritually strong because it has, you understand, cushion pews. It's not spiritually strong because it has a good singing choir. It's not spiritually strong because it has praise dancers. Because you can have folks dancing, but they ain't dancing for Jesus. You can have folks singing who don't know what they're singing about. Am I right about it here? The church ought to be spiritually strong because it's a church that's in the Word. And how, the, how strong it is spiritually is in your hands. You do know that no chain is any stronger than its weakest link. And so when you are not as spiritually astute as you ought to be, it means that you lessen the spiritual strength in the life of your church. The church can't be stronger when you miss Bible study. The church can't be stronger when you miss teacher's meeting, when you miss Sunday school, when you miss institutes, when you miss revival. The church can't be spiritually stronger when, in essence, those who make up the membership would rather be watching scandal. Help me, Lord Jesus. Don't y'all make me go there. What's that other show that come on on Tuesday night? Empire. What's that other one? Yeah, that one too. Amen. With Candace and all of them. Amen. Uh, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, it's in your hands. Your, your church cannot be numerically stronger. When those who have their names on the roll don't roll up here until Lewis brings them. Sutton and Sutton bring them. Come on here, somebody. Y'all know who those people are, don't you? That's the funeral home. Some people join church and we don't hear from them no more until the family calls and says, you know my mama was a member there. I like that word, was, 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 and past tense. Well, me, she ain't been here in 16 years. <laughs> but you still claiming membership for mama. Yes, Lord. The numerical strength of the church is in your hand. Sometimes my wife and I will go out to eat and we'll see a restaurant. We say, oh, yeah, what about them? And we look, but ain't but three calls on the lot. And then we start scratching our heads and say, do we want to go in there or not? Because based on the time of day, and if it ain't the three cars on the lot, maybe somebody's trying to tell you something. 
ain't nothing going on up in there. Are y'all with me here? But when you go somewhere and look like you can see cars and cars, and it ain't but one person in a car, if you got 50 cars out there, somebody thinks something is going on up in here. But at a time when worship, at a time when, when Christian education, when a time when service is going on, and ain't but two cars on the lot, somebody say, something ain't happening in there. And so I say to you today, it's in your hand. So my brothers and sisters, the, the Christian ministry of this church is also in your hand. I know that Bethany is a church that reaches beyond the four walls. I know that it's a church that believes in helping those who are the least, the last, and the lost. But our Christian ministry, your Christian ministry, is not just in Pastor Benson's hand, it's in Bethany's hand. Help me, Lord Jesus. What you do and how you do it, who you do it with and for, how much you do is based on the hands of members that make up the membership of this church. And so the question today is, is the church in the right hand? And I say again, if you walked up to this building and somehow or another it was an animated character, would it celebrate because you show up? I uh, with the church, oh Lord, here they come. <laughs> yeah, man, Lord Jesus. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. There are people who are here, but they are not here. Yeah. They're here in body, but they are not here in spirit. All right, all right. And so it is, the hands of those who make up the membership of the church must be hands of, of prayer. Must be hands of praise. Must be hands of participation. The Lord needs people who make up the body of Jesus Christ. To be people who, amen, are representatives of good hands. And that because I'm here, the church can know it's in good shape. It's in better shape. It has somebody who will strengthen it and who will make it to be all that God would want it to be. And so David said, Lord, let me just be real and tell you that I'm living in a world where everybody don't do the right thing. I'm living in a world where everybody don't treat me the right way. I'm living in a world where I got to put up with some of this and some of that. The real truth is sometimes I'm not in the best of hands when it comes to me. But I'm glad that I can say that I know I'm in your hands. And because I'm in your hands, I know I am in good hands. People don't always love me right. People don't always treat me right. People don't always support me right. People don't always stand with me right. People don't always believe in me right. I'm in a world where I am affected by the hands of men and they are not the good hands. But Lord, I'm grateful that I know a God like you and that your hands are mighty good hands. Is there anybody here this evening that knows that God's hands are good hands? And that when you're in the hands of the Lord, that the Lord will take care of you. For 35 years, the Lord has been taking care of Bethany. Since January 6 of 1980, this old ship of Zion has been in mighty good hands. The hands of 10 charter members, but also the hands of God, who is an eternal God. Some of those who started out with Bethany a long time ago have crossed over on the other side. Their hands were helpful hands. Their hands were 
were blessing a hand. Their hands were working a hand. Their hands were giving a hand. But thank the Lord that there is another set of hands that time can't take away from you. There is another set of hands that was here yesterday. They are here right now and they will be here on tomorrow because the Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And when you're in God's hands, you can count on God being there. Some ought to say down through the years, the love has been good to me. I know there are some people in Bethany, when you look back over your history, you will say down through the years, the love has been good to us. Nobody but Jesus, nobody but the Lord has brought us a mighty long way. Have I got a witness here? God's hand a good hand because his hands are hands of providence. God's hands a mighty good hand because his hands are hands that provide. Is there anybody here that know this evening that where you are the Lord brought you? Where you are it be called nobody but the Lord has kept you all the days of your life. The Lord's hands are hands of providence. He's able to make a way somehow. When you didn't know how, you were going to make it sometime. The Lord already had it worked out. Have I got a witness here? Come on, tell your neighbor. Be not just me. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Have I got a witness here? His hand is a providential hand. He's in charge. He's in control. And when God wanna bless you, can't nobody stop him. When God wanna set you up, can't nobody stop him. When God wants you to succeed, can't nobody stop him. He's able, he's able to take care of you. His hand, a hand of provision. Is there anybody here who will tell your neighbor what I have? The Lord gave me. Have I got a witness here? He's able to provide. I might not have the best of everything, but I thank the Lord for what I do have because protection. He's able to fight battle for you. He's able to take care of your enemies. He's able when you go through violence and shadows of death, you don't have to fear no kind of evil because when you got the Lord on your side, you have a battle axe. In the time of war, when you have the Lord on your side, no weapon formed against you is able to prosper. When you have him on your side, you can do all things through Christ that strengthen you. Is there anybody here who will tell your neighbor? Thank the Lord, I'm in. Yeah. 
to let you down sometime. But I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I'm in God's hand. I'm glad that this church is in God's hand. I heard Jesus say, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell.
Just a little sunshine. Every now and then. But here I am. Use me, Lord. In your service. Because I'm willing to run. Can I hear him tell you something? You ought to be willing to run. Because you don't know how much longer you're going to be able to run. And you got to run while you can. Well, I'm willing to run all the way. All the way. All the way. Lord, I'm willing. Person beside me may not be willing, but that's between you and them. But I'm willing. I can't let what I'm gonna do be tempered by what somebody else does or doesn't do. I gotta do what I know I'm supposed to do, even if other folk ain't trying to do nothing. Cause I know, Lord, if it had not been for you, that's been on my side. That's why I'm willing to run. Can I ask you something? I'm going to let you on. I'm going to let you on. Is there anybody here today that believe you owe God something? I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just asking. Is there anybody here that feel like, believe that you owe God something? Because I owe him. Oh, have mercy. Why do you preach your heart up because I owe him something? Why do you show up every time on because I owe him something? Why do you give the way because I owe him something? I'm just trying to find five people right in this area right who ain't ashamed to say, I owe him, I owe him. I owe him, I owe him. him. Walk me up this morning. Started me on my way. Can I find five people right through here who are not ashamed to say, I owe him? When I was sick and they thought I wasn't going to get away. He healed my body. I owe him, I owe him. When I look back home on my life and what he brought me through. I got any veterans in here? If you're a veteran, raise your hand. If you're a veteran, raise your hand. You ought to be hollering, I owe him. I owe him because you weren't left on the soil of another country. But you were able to get back home. I owe him, I owe him. All of Jesus, you ought to surrender me. All of him, you ought to freely give. Because you believe you owe him. And when you feel like you owe him, the church is in better hands than it is with people who think they don't owe God nothing. It's in better hands when you got people who know that nobody but God is responsible for where I am in my life. Come on, turn to your neighbor, look at him right on there. I say, neighbor, you're looking at somebody that's still under construction. But please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. My hands are going to be better hands. My hands are going to be gooder hands. My hands are going to be more giving hands. Serving hands. Working hands. Open hands. Loving hands. Come on, hug somebody right now. Come on, hug somebody right now. Put those hands around somebody. But the hand that Bethany that is in has got to be the right hand. And if they're not the right hands, God can't take you where God wants you to go. Don't be difficult when he ain't working with the right hands. But when you got the right hands, God can elevate you. God can use you. God can prosper you. God will make folk look at you and wonder how in the world did they do all of that. It's because when God's hands and your hands come together, it ain't about how great you are, it's about how great he is and what he can
can do. Because a little, I'm talking about my hand, becomes much what is in the master's hand. When you leave here today, I want you to turn around and look back at the church and see if it's an animated character. And ask yourself, what are you going to say to me? Are you glad that I'm here? Or are you glad to see me when I leave? Because the church needs members that the church can speak well about. I hope your hands are the right hands. have been challenged yes, yes, yes. being in the right hands. We're going to extend the privilege of the church. There may be someone who needs to surrender to the Lord. You've been challenged. You've been inspired. You've been pushed to the precipice. Now it's decision time. If you're here, won't you come? If you're here, I surrender. That's all God wants you to do. That's the way it's challenged us. Be in the right hand. Oh, yeah. Oh. 
all the equations didn't take off to zero for that. Your cell phone works by zero. If we didn't have zero, we couldn't go into outer space. Do you know when you become zero, God stands by you as a one, and you become ten? If something is a two, you're twenty. If you had some more zero, you can be a hundred. God specializes in working with nothing and making something out of nothing. So you all see We thank God. Amen. We put more than two chairs up here because we know we have an expectation of more than two folk. Amen. And when they come, they're asking for prayer if they've already saved. Amen. So we thank God for this family.